Die zit voor die TV, gal, die zit voor die TV. Amen. Nou, van jullie vrouw mensen, ja, dan een klopje van jullie. Ik is zo prachtig hier, Australië of hier. My hands and your hands. Halleluja. Good morning, everybody. Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is a good morning this morning. Amen. Indeed, it is a good morning. Why are we here this morning? It's not because it's Christmas morning. Yes, we're here to celebrate. Praise God. Sure, we thank God. We thank God for this morning. Can we just pray before we, before we go into the word? You know, we do all the worship. We do all the praise. And this morning, while I was standing there and the worship team is so beautiful, the scripture comes to mind again in, in Psalm 149. It says, it's an honor to bring our praise and our worship to God. It's indeed an honor. So when you stand there and you worship and you lift your hands, don't think that you're just doing it because it's part of the service and it's part of the hour that must go past. No, it's an honor unto our Savior this morning. So whenever you're at home as well, wherever you go, when you worship, when you praise, when you bring praises to God, it is an honor. It's an honor to Him. It's your honor. It's your privilege to do it this morning. Father, we say thank you this day. Thank you, O oh God, that w another year we can celebrate. Like the world is celebrating the birth of Christ. And we celebrate. Father, we honor you this morning, my God. We want to remember what Christ has done for us, Lord. We want to remember your heart towards us, Father. We want to remember your grace and your mercy towards us this morning, Father. I thank you, O oh God, for an open heaven over this place this morning, Father. For your angels to ascend and to descend, Father. I thank you, God, that not one word that will be preached or will be shared this morning, Father, will be taken by the enemy, Father. That every word, O oh God, spoken here this morning will go into fruitful soil, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father. I pray that everyone that can hear my voice this morning, Father, is fruitful soil in your kingdom, my God. I thank you, Father, this morning. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done, Father, in each and every one of our lives this morning, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to get into it. Greetings to the Echonoia, the cold eyed ones. That's you. Amen. You have to say amen after each greeting, please. Greetings to the ones who have placed their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Greetings to the redeemed of the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. Greetings to the church where the spirits of just men has been made perfect. Amen. Greetings to the church of who the world is not worthy of. Amen. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stop the mouths of lions. Greetings to the church of the firstborn of the dead. Greetings to my brothers and sisters. I greet you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, it is Christmas time. And everybody is saying Merry Christmas, Happy Christmas, or whichever way you, greeting to, uh, you greet your loved ones to say Merry Christmas. It is a magical time. I've realized all over the world, Everybody, you know, when it comes to Christmas time, everybody's celebrating it. Even the Muslims, even the Hindus, whichever religion you can think of, right around the world. People are going into malls, they're putting up the Christmas tree, they're putting the, the, the presents under the Christmas tree. Everybody does that. You know, and then there's those that say, no, but it's pagan. You're not supposed to do it. It's wrong to do it. And then you feel so guilty because you want to put up the Christmas tree because this is how we grew up. And you want to put on, the, you want to hang it up and you get those little balls with all the names on and you hang it up. And then somebody passes and you can't hang the name on anymore. Or sometimes you do hang the name on. I remember when my mother passed, Bianca made all the balls for all of us with Oma and Opa on as well. And then we would hang it on the tree. And then my, pa my dad passed first. And then I realized, must I put it on? Or shouldn't I put it on? And I kept it off. And then my mother passed. And I thought, ah, must I put it on? Should I? Shouldn't I? And we left it off. And we carried on with life. Because we can't live with the dead. And it's hard so to say that, eh? It, it's not nice to, 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 to say that. 
But then I kept the balls off and we just carried on. Carried on with life and he is on. I'm still okay. We're still going strong. Amen. That is, uh, life is for the living. Am I saying it right? Life is for the living. But you know, I've come to realize at Christmas time, there's this yearning in each and every one of us. We want to celebrate Christmas. No matter what the others say, it's a pagan holiday or whatever. We all know that Jesus wasn't born on the 25th of Christmas. And this morning in the car, I was really impressed by Adassa. I want to say this to you, Adassa, my eldest daughter, when she said, she told the daddy, or all of us in the car, but um, daddy, you know that Jesus was actually born during the Feast of Tabernacles. And I'm listening and I'm thinking, okay. And I'm feeling now excited because she's getting it. And um, she said, yes, it's not this time because if you read the scriptures, it says that there was a feast. And I'm getting more excited. Now, now parents, if you don't get excited when, you, when your children actually get to that revelation. I was totally excited because I'm like, thank you, Lord. Reminds me of you, Erin. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. My daughter is getting it. And we should be so excited when our children get to the revelation of the word. And she said, uh, and so Rebecca said, but daddy did say that before daddy taught us. And Re Adassa said, no, I told daddy that. <laughs> now, Taryn, you know, I was laughing because it's something that, you, you know how it is. We, we've known it for quite a long time. And, but here comes Adassa. And she taught the daddy that part of the Feast of Tabernacles, daddy. Your daughter told you that. That Jesus was born during the Feast of Tabernacles. Let it sink in. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It was, it, was, it was amazing in the car. It was lovely, man, that, that she taught the daddy something. So thank you, Adassa, for, for teaching daddy that. So coming back to just to, to saying there's a yearning during Christmas time when, when it's Christmas. And you know, for some of you, for all of us, this will be, for EKC, this will be our last formal word for, for 2021. So I'm going to make it good. But there's a yearning inside of each and every one of us during Christmas time. And that yearning, I was pondering and I thought to myself, what is it that we want to celebrate on a Christmas? And I've come to realize it is to remember. It's because we want to remember. We want to remember Jesus. We want to celebrate Jesus. There's a remembrance. And I'm titling my, the sermon this morning, A Call to Remember. We want to remember Jesus. But when we remember Jesus, yes, we want to remember with all the frills and everything happening during Christmas time. It's a happy time. We are all happy, no matter what happened during this year. And we had tears during this year. Eh? We had pain in our heart during this year. We still have. We still shed tears. We still shed tears this morning getting up. But there's something about Christmas that all of us want to celebrate. We don't want to have these long faces. We remember Jesus, what he has done for us. But if we must truly remember, we're going to cry. We're going to think of the death. We're going to think of the grave, the cross, the grave, all of those. It's a cause to cry, but we all celebrate on a Christmas time. And my sermon title is A Call to Remember. We must know how to remember Christ. We want to remember. We remember him. And the thing is, it's not that should we remember, when must we remember during October, Feast of Tabernacles, December, Christmas time. It is that we should, we must remember him. But the how is important. How we should remember him. And um, my first scripture, I'm not sure if it, it's going to go up. My first scripture is out of First Corinthians 10 verse 15 to 16. I'm just going to read it for, uh, to you. I speak as to wise men. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? And the second scripture I want to take out of Luke, I'm going to come back to that one. 22 verse 19 says, and he took bread gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So this is such a powerful scripture because while Jesus was here on this earth, he spoke to his disciples and he said, do this in remembrance of me. 
Jesus is saying we have to remember him. If you are a follower of Christ, you cannot not have communion. You must have communion in your home. Whenever we come together as the body of Christ, whenever we as friends in Christ celebrate and we get together, we must remember him. Otherwise, why are we fellowshipping? Why are we getting together? Because if you remember him, he's there in your midst. This is the reason why we have Christmas, to remember him. And not only him, we have to remember those in him as well. Not only him, we have to remember those in him. We have to remember Sergio. We have to remember the Pitsy family. We have to remember Uncle Mike. We have to remember those in Christ. Those that have gone before us. We have to remember them. Jesus then said, remember me. As often as you come together, remember me. So what am I saying to all of you this, this morning? It's the most important thing here. If you are a follower of Christ, you have to remember. You have to remember Christ. But you also have to remember those that's gone before us. But guess what? We have to remember each other as well. While we're here, we have to remember one another. And the how is important, I said. How do we do it? I have four hows for you this morning. The first one is to have communion. We have to, we must have communion. If you neglect the communion and you're in fellowship, I want to say to you, watch it. There's some dryness creeping in. If you have a friendship circle, think, just sit, ponder a little bit. If you are in a friendship circle, and this circle is in Christ, and you fellowship every time, every week you come together, you don't mention Christ once. You don't have communion at the table. You don't set out the table once, and you're in that circle. Are you still friends with that group? Think about it. Dryness have crept in. I can tell you what have happened in that group. Dryness crept in. Something crept in that has, have pulled you guys apart from each other. Something crept in, and you guys are rubbing each other up the wrong way. Purely because Jesus has put something out for us. How we should remember him when we get together. It's the most beautiful thing. I hope you can hear me this morning. This is the most important thing for us as disciples of Christ. It's the most important thing for us that are followers of Christ. You have to remember your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You must have communion. It is part of your purpose on this earth. If you want to, if you want to search and figure out, Lord, what is my purpose? What am I doing here? If you've gone and you've walked a road and you have not done this for a very long time, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to guarantee, I'm going to promise you that God is going to bring you back to this point where you are today. You are here because you have to hear this message this morning. Father God, the Spirit of God have done this with you, but he has brought you back because you have forgotten how to do communion and how to have fellowship. He has saved your soul, but you have forgotten this. That is actually the glue. That is actually the glue within and in your midst of your friends. Get the communion table back in your home. Get the communion table back between you and your friends. And I promise you, the word of God will be evident in your house and in your life. This is something that you cannot neglect. The second how is communication. How we, co how we communicate to each other. How we communicate Christ to one another. How we share Christ with one another. And how we communicate to each other the Christ in our midst. It is important. It is important how we share. And how we, how we share the love of Christ. How we communicate. I hope you're here this morning because this is one of the most important lessons in our life. Because if we neglect this, we neglect the body of Christ. And this is where all the feuds and the fights come and the rubbing up and the dryness in our lives because we're not doing this. And the third how is contribution. We should contribute to one another's life. We should contribute to the house, to the home. We should contribute. Contribute to the benefit, to the benefits of others. 
according to the gifting and resources God has freely given. God has freely given to each and every one of us, be it financially, materially, spiritually. We should contribute to each other. Don't neglect to open your hands to each other. Sommige van ons is so bang om ons handen oop te maak vir mekaar. Because we think that that person is taking advantage of you. You know, I've learned a valuable lesson from my husband. If somebody come and ask, and it's also according to the word, if somebody come and ask, give, open up. Sometimes I would tell him, no, but they're taking advantage, you should. Why don't all of this? And then he would tell me, Christine, no. No, 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 no. You give. And I thank God this morning for you. I really thank God this morning for my husband. This word I've been pondering over, I was sitting with a word and I gave him this word and I said, this is what I want to share. Last week I gave him another word and he did that word as well. We, we shared the word last week. And then he asked me a few days ago, so Christine, what are you going to share? And I gave him this word and I said, this is what I want to share. And he sat with it, he went through it and he said, no, 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 this, he changed it a little bit. And I thank God this morning. I really thank God uh, from the bottom of my heart. This morning, I'm just a little bit off the topic, um, Deacon Ali came to him and he said a few words. Is Uncle Ali here? Uncle Ali is always busy, so many kids. Where is he? No, no, it's fine. He's, he's, he's always busy with, with the kids. But he was standing outside and he spoke to my husband and he blessed him with a few words. And I want to say this, I don't think he realized what you have actually gone through also this year. It's been a tough, tough year, very, very tough year. But he came and he said this word so nonchalant, but um, I want to say to you, thank you for those words from my husband. Is that you standing there? The light is a bit, um, as a big scarp. Thank you for those words. For it was like water over, over his soul. Can I say that? Um, it really touched him this morning. I didn't speak to him yet, but I could see because I know what he's gone through. And just yesterday he was sitting and he said, Yo, Christine, it's tough. And I want to say thank you for being so sensitive this morning. It's really, it, it's, it's amazing when God puts people are, are, are on your road to pray for you. May God bless you, Deacon Ali. And, um, and that's part of the contribution. And the last how when we remember is distribution. That, that you contribute, that you bring to the house of the Lord, that you give to one another, we have to distribute. We have to. Whatever you contribute must be distributed amongst us. We cannot neglect that. It's the most, the most important thing. Distribute to one another of what God has provided for us. We distribute what was contributed to everyone. That is what I'm putting down here. I hope you hear what I'm saying this morning. This is so important. So, so important, especially during Christmas time, where we have to remember Christ. We have to remember each other. We have to remember those that's gone before us. Don't be fearful to, to remember and to talk about it. We have to. We have to. That is part of who we are, part of, of, of what Christ came to do for us. I want to tell you a story, a small story. Um, growing up, you know Christmas time is this, ex for me it's a magical time, Christmas. It's beautiful. Everybody's happy. Amal maak jy self de kosse. Pout, gammon, wat trifle. And for most, the trifle must be spiked. And what else? And what else do you make? Salads and turkey, turkey. We don't have turkey this year. I was looking, I didn't get turkey. Oh, you know, tongue. We don't have tongue in our house. Tongue. And South Place, yo, everybody makes the same food. If you go to one house or to the next house, it's self the course. Everywhere. And you know what the amazing thing is? When you go and visit your auntie or your friend or whoever, they pack in the food and they eat precisely self the course. And that's very, oh my, no, no, you must take, we have a lot. And then you take a yellow buck, trifle, I used to. And a yellow box salt place. And then you get home and you're thinking, what am I going to do with all this food? And then they come the next day and then they eat their own food up. <laughs> it's the amazing thing. 
amazing, amazing thing. I'm not sure if, if, if Cape Town is unique, but here in Cape Town, we do all this. And then is Apaella as well. You, a lot of food. But you know, the story goes like this. I was in, I think I was standard six or standard seven, grade eight or grade 10. I just entered high school. And this friend of mine, it was Christmas time. We were all excited. And um, I'm complaining to her and I'm saying, you know, these Muslims also celebrate Christmas. They also have a Christmas tree up. And they share presents this the way we want to. And I just couldn't handle it. For me, was it, it's our Christmas. Let us celebrate our Christmas alone. You know, let us have a liquor time. But these Muslims, they celebrate with us. And for me, it was, I just didn't like it. And this girl looked at me like this and she said, what's wrong with you? Christmas is not about you. Christmas, Jesus came for everybody. And I looked at her and I said, no, he didn't. He came for us. It's, it's, it's our Christmas. We, we should celebrate it. They have their Eid. And the valley and all of those things. You know, and I'm, I was so upset and I had a little argument with her. And I went home and I thought to myself, I wonder. But I felt rebuked, man. I felt the south, the nerve of this girl, girl to tell me that Christmas is for Muslims as well. It's for us. And then later, after many years... I gave my heart to the Lord and I came to realize, my word, Christ didn't just come for us. He came for the world. He's the savior of the world. And this is one of the biggest house that we neglect to share the savior of this world. We have to tell our children, no man, we have to share Christmas with everybody. It's not a pagan holiday. We celebrate in Christ. If you can have a meal at home, if you can open your, your, your table and say, no, come. Jesus did it. Go to the highways and the byways. Go and get them. Let them sit around your table and you share the story of Christ. You share the birth. You share the love. This is why we are here this morning. We are here this morning to celebrate Christ. Yes, he came. He, he, but every year, every year we should take this opportunity. It's not a pagan holiday. We celebrate in Christ. Yes, he wasn't born on the 25th. But the thing is, he was born. He was born. He came to die for us. So let us do the biggest how. Come, let us share today. Let us share with one another. Let's open our hearts to each other. Let's invite, let, let's invite those that can't invite us to our table and say, let us share with you. Come, come hear about the story of Christ. We have to sit. Our children must sit around. And we should share the story to them, to the little ones. Otherwise, how are they going to know? How is Joshua going to know that he must celebrate Christ? And there's a beautiful way to celebrate it. Let's open up our tables. Let's open up our hearts. This is a time where Jesus is calling us back to his table. As you open up your table, Jesus is, is calling back those that went up to the highways went to the byways, but he's calling them back from the highways and the byways. Come, come share. Come back again. Let's share the love again. This is a beautiful time. Let's not shut our, our hearts and our minds for one another. Let's love, man. Let's love. Let's do this thing together. Amen? Amen. That's my encouragement this morning to each and every one of us. Let us come back to the table of the Lord. Let us get back to communion and love on each other. Can we stand, please? I just want you to lift your hands that this word that was shared this morning, that it will sink in. Father, I pray this morning for everyone with extended hands this morning, Father, that you will touch their hearts, Father. Lord, where dryness has crept in, my God, that you will come, my God, and let your loving waters flow again through their lives, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray that there will be a tugging inside of them, Lord. A drawing inside of them, O oh God, by your Spirit, Lord. Calling them back, Father God. Calling the love of Christ back into their lives, Father. That they will go out and share the love of Christ, Lord. That they will share the birth story again, Father. That they will share the love, the cross again, Lord. They will share the grave again. Father, we choose to remember. We choose to remember those that have gone before us, Lord. We choose to remember.
remember, Father, each and every one that's still here with us, Lord. We remember them, Father. Whatever they're going through this morning, Lord, everyone that can hear my voice this morning, God, that you will touch their hearts this morning, Father, that you will strengthen them, my God, this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, Father. Touch their minds, Father. Touch their bodies this morning. Touch their hearts, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. I pray, Father, loving waters to flow this morning, Father, through these aisles, O oh God. Loving waters over the live stream this morning, Father. That you will touch them, Father, and bring your newness of life to them, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, you know each and every one by the point of their need, Father, here this morning. And I pray for newness, for freshness to come this morning, my God. And we give you thanks, we give you praise, Father. We take the honor, Father, that's due to us to worship you, to praise you, to give you thanks this morning, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. I'm going to...